Last time we were able to see how to export data to CSV format. So if you haven't checked that video out, I recommend you check it out. So in this one, we are going to go ahead and export the same data to Excel. So right here, we are going to be using a module called XLWT. So this is, this is going to enable us to actually make this feature real quick and also make sure it's compatible with older versions of Excel. So we start by installing it. So I'm going to go to install instructions. So we basically want, want to install it using pip. So since we are using pppnv, I'm going to come over here, stop the server. Then I'm going to use pppnv, pppnv, install xlwt. Okay, so as, inst as it installs, the first thing we are going to need to do is add a, add a button which a user can click to download the file. So I'm going to copy this button that we have already. So I'm actually going to duplicate it. So this one is going to go to a view called export Excel. So here, I'm going to change this one to export Excel. And to make it look differently, I'm going to change this one to primary. All right, so once we have this, we need to create the view and the route for this. So in the views.py, I'm going to create a view. So this one is going to be called export Excel. So text in request, of course, since it's, since it's a function of you. So here, I'm going to leave it here for now. So let's set up a route for it. So in, in urls.py, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, then duplicate it. So this one is going to be export Excel. So it's going to be the same thing here. Excel. So we, we have to make sure that it's it's rendering that view. So it should be Excel. And also we want to make sure that this name is the same name that we are putting in our URL. Okay. All right, so looking good. So once we have that, now we need to come over here and construct our Excel file response. So the first thing we are going to need to do is construct our, our response object. So response. So we use HTTP response here, like we did here. So we want to do HTTP response. So this is going to be, of course, taking the content, content type. So let's define a content underscore type. So this here is going to be equal to, so for, for Excel files, this one is going to be application slash ms dash Excel application slash ms dash excel. All right, so once we have that, now we need to set the content disposition. So as you know, this basically adds more data to the file. So this will tell like the browser to know how to handle it. So the content disposition will go ahead and add more metadata like the file name to it. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and bring the same line because it's going to be the same. So this is going to be dot x ls okay so once we have that basically this will tell the browsers how to handle the type of file then this will add some metadata like the file name so once we have that now we need to create something called a workbook so to create a workbook i'm going to create a variable called wb so it's going to be set to x yeah so let's import the module so import the module there all right so what we want to do is do xlwt dot workbook so what we do we set a, an encoding so we need to set encoding for it so set encoding so we use utf8 you can think of a workbook as the excel file itself so once we have that we need to start adding sheets to it so now we can now create a sheet so i'm going to call it ws this is going to be wb dot add sheet so basically the sheet we need to give it a name so i'm going to call this one expenses so once we have that we need to now start adding rows to the sheet so first thing is i'm going to define a row number so row underscore num so initially i'm going to start out with one that's zero then on this very one i'm going to go ahead and make sure it's bold because if you think of it it's going to be like a header for our file so right now i'm going to create a font style so font style so the font style is going to be, we are basically going to use the, what is it? So this one, then on it, we call XF style. Okay, so once we do that, now we can 
add to it. So now we want to make the first row bold. So we can do font style dot font dot bold equals true. And it shouldn't be bold, it should be bold. Okay. So once we have that, now we can create our first columns that we can add in the first row. So we can do columns. So this one is gonna actually be similar to the one we created here. So I'm gonna copy everything here, then bring them here. All right, so once we have the columns, we need to insert this, this, these columns in the row we created, basically this one. So what we do is we're gonna write a loop. So for call underscore num in range, so this is gonna be as much as the, the number of the items in this column. So then columns, so we need to so we need to add this one. So what we do is we use ws dot write should be ws dot write. Alright, so we basically want to add the row number, the column number, and the actual content. So in this case, we do row num, then we do call num, then we add the content by adding columns, then at this very index, so that will be call num. And then we want to add our config for the font. So add font style there too. Okay, so once we have that, now we can add our dynamic rows. But before we do that, we need to first reset our font style, just so only the headers keep the font style. So here, I'm gonna now set font style back to this. Okay, so now the next thing you're going to need to do is create our dynamic rows. So I'm gonna set up a variable called rows. So this is gonna be the expenses from the DB. So this is gonna be expenses, expense.objects. Dot filter so we want to filter by the current logged in user such that the user gets only their expenses so this is going to be owner equals request dot user okay so once we have that now we need to call values list and we give it the basically the the, the fields we want to to get so i'm gonna get this one here just so we can refer to it Anyway, so the first thing is going to be amount. I think I can even see it from up here. The next thing is going to be description. The next thing will be the category. So category, then the date. Okay, so once we have this, now we need to add these rows to our sheet. So the way we do that is we loop over them. So for row in rows, so we want now to increment the, the rows. So from zero, we are now going to be incrementing as for as many items we have in our, in our expenses. So we can first increment row num. So plus equals one. Then now we need to add the column. So we can do for call num in range. So this is gonna be taking in, so basically it's gonna be like the same thing, but for this row. So now we can do then row. And now we need to add each row to the sheet. So we do ws dot right. So now we need to write like we did here. So it's gonna be the row num, the call num. Actually, it's gonna be the same thing. So it's gonna be the row num, the call num. Then when it comes to this, now we are using the row, of course. So I'm gonna copy the row. And then, of course, text in call num. But then I'm gonna transform this into a string because we can get we can get some issues rendering other data types like like dates. Or decimals so I'm gonna turn this into a string just so it renders properly then the font style will be the font style that's not bold okay looking good so once we have that we need to add this sheet to our our workbook so to add to the workbook we do wb dot save response okay so then we need to return the response from the view so return response all right, so looking good. So now we have the view, we have the URL, we have the, the template. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have now. So I'm gonna rerun the server. And now when we come to the app, you can see we have an option to export to Excel. So when we click on it, you can see it downloads the file, then it's postfixed with .xls. So once we click on it, you can see that we have the information from in an Excel format. So I'm gonna open this in a, in a spreadsheet just so we can look at it better. So I'm gonna come over here and upload it to, to Google Docs. And then I will say import data. And then you can see it picks up actually the dynamic name using the current date and time. So 
So then I'm gonna open it up and you can see that we have our Excel format. All right, so this is well and good. I'm gonna be pausing the video here. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel. So in the next one, we'll be adding the same functionality, but for a PDF file. So see you guys in the next one.